Hello and welcome to part 6 of our free RTOS tutorial for the RP2040 chip. In this video we're going to cover a hotly requested topic of free RTOS SMP or symmetric multiprocessing. SMP will allow us to make use of both of the ARM Cortex M0 Plus cores in the RP2040 microcontroller whilst using a real-time operating system. In this video we will cover how SMP works, how to create a project that will utilise it and we'll accompany this with a couple of simple demo projects. Free RTOS SMP is quite a complex topic and so this video is likely going to be split into two, with a second part covering some more detailed examples. There is a written version of this video with included source code linked down in the video description for your reference. This is one of the more complex videos in this series so I would recommend being up to speed with the topics we have previously mentioned in this series. These are topics like task scheduling and priorities, as well as how to communicate between tasks with things like mutexes and semaphores. I will leave a link to the free RTOS on the RP2040 playlist down in the description. If you are looking for a free, easy and engaging way to learn more about computer science, then look no further than this video sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has thousands of lessons on topics like computer science, programming, engineering, and how everyday technology works. That's just to name a few. These interactive lessons can help you master complex topics in as little as 15 minutes per day on any device, so you could even learn whilst on the go, maybe even on your commute, on your phone. My personal favourite course so far has been Brilliant's How Technology Works, which covers how you can apply your everyday understanding of computer science and engineering into things that we use in our everyday lives, like GPS and wireless communication. Go try everything that Brilliant has to offer, free for 30 days, by visiting brilliant.org slash learn embedded systems, or click the link down in the video description. The first 200 of you to sign up with that link down below will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now, using both cores with FreeRTOS might seem straightforward from the outset, but there are many challenges that can crop up if you're not expecting them. If we look back to some of our earlier videos about task scheduling in a single core environment, we know that to give the impression of running tasks concurrently, tasks are actually run one at a time, but with round robin time slicing. The scheduler is responsible for allocating time to each task depending on their priority. Now, when we look at a multi-core situation, things are fundamentally quite different. In free RTOS terms, there are two architectures, I, sp I suppose you could call them architectures. We have asymmetric multiprocessing, or AMP, and symmetric mul multiprocessing, or SMP. And we're just going to quickly run over the differences. If we take a look at free RTOS's definition of AMP, basically each core of a multi-core system runs its own independent version of free RTOS. This means that the architectures of each of the cores can be different, or asymmetric as the name implies. Some memory must be shared between the cores to enable them to communicate with each other. But as each core runs its own instance of free RTOS, each core runs its own scheduler. In an SMP environment, however, a single instance of free RTOS schedules tasks across multiple cores. As only one instance of free RTOS is running, only one port of FreeRTOS can be used. In this case, we're going to be using the port for the RP2040. And hence, the architecture of each core must be the same. Um, and for the RP2040, that means we can use both of the Cortex M0 Plus cores. The main difference in thinking between SMP and a single core system is that two tasks can be in the running state at one time. This means that the assumption that a lower priority task will only ever run when there are no higher priority tasks able to run, no longer holds. Imagine that you have two tasks, one with a high priority and one with a low priority. In a dual core SMP system, the scheduler would pick the high priority task to run on core zero, but would then also pick the lower priority task to run on core one, meaning that both high and low priority tasks are running simultaneously. Tasks that are in a blocked or suspended state are not able to run at that time, and so are not selected by the scheduler, so that behaviour is unchanged. However, the one thing that might catch you out 
is that the assumption that tasks no, that no tasks run while an ISR or interrupt service routine is running is also no longer valid. And so if data is shared between an ISR and tasks, well then you need to be, you need to be really careful that you ensure proper mutual exclusion whilst accessing data shared between tasks and ISRs. There is a, there is a way to slightly disable this behavior at the cost of the efficiency of having more than one core available to you. In the free rtosconfig.h file, you can set an option called config run multiple priorities, which when set to zero, can disable tasks of different priorities running at the same time, and only tasks running with the same priorities will actually run truly concurrently. This can be helpful if you have code written for a single core application that you want to port over to an SMP application with minimal tinkering, shall we say. So now let's cover a bit about why and when you'd want to use an SMP free RTOS application. I think one of the main things for me, and for many of you probably, is that I would hate to have one free core sat around not doing anything and leaving potential performance on the table. However, there is a fairly substantial complexity increase that you have to bear in mind. So for some simple applications, it might not be worth the effort over a standard single core free RTOS implementation. However, hopefully this video breaks it down for you to implement it in the most straightforward way possible. There are four main functions or API calls that you will come across when using SMP in FreeRTOS. And these are v task core affinity set, v task core affinity get, v task preemption disable, and v task preemption enable. In case you're unfamiliar with the FreeRTOS function naming convention, the V at the start of these functions means that there is no expected result from the function, i.e. a function of type void. An X at the start of the function means that you would expect something to be returned. So in terms of these functions, V task core affinity set is used to pin a task to a specific core. You don't have to do this. You can let the scheduler decide which core which task should run on. But there are a few cases where you might want to pin a task to a core. For example, you might want to pin tasks to ensure that you have more control over how they execute, or you might want to use certain interrupts that may be tied to specific cores. If you want the best core utilization, shall we say, and the easiest method is to actually let the scheduler decide which core task should run on. So the, the, this function takes the handle of the function that you want to pin, and then a mask for which core that task can run on. So if you want to set a task to only run on core zero, then you would set the mask to the following. Next up, we have v task core affinity get, which takes the task handle and returns the core affinity mask that we've just set in the previous function. Then we have the v task preemption disable and enable. These tasks, unsurprisingly, disable and enable preemption respectively. They take the argument of the task handle, however, if a null value is passed to the function, then the calling task is the task uh, affected by this. Code that's run between these sections won't be preempted by a higher priority task, but this setting requires the config use task preemption disable setting to be set to one in the free rtosconfig.h file for it to work. Up until quite recently, the SMP functionality of free RTOS has been contained in a separate branch of the free RTOS kernel but now they have been merged, sort of in the process at the moment. So we have created a free RTOS non-SMP template project that I will link below, which includes the free RTOS kernel as a submodule. This is what we will use as a starting point for our demos, and we will easily modify it to run in SMP mode. It contains everything that you need to start your free RTOS SMP projects. Simply clone the repository and open the directory in VS Code. Make sure that you use the recursive clone to download the free RTOS submodule. You will see that we have two main folders, a lib folder, which contains the free RTOS kernel, and a source folder, which contains our source files. There is a cmakeslist.txt file in each of the directories. The parent cmakelist file does some basic things like setting the project name and all the paths you to use in our libraries. In our source folder, this cmakelist file you can include any libraries you want to use in your project using the target link libraries function. Now, the first thing we need to do is edit the free rtosconfig.h file. If we scroll down a bit, 
we can find these four lines, which we simply need to change the config number of cores from one to two. It's that simple. Here as, you, as well, you can see the run multiple priorities definition that we previously talked about. The core affinity setting set to one means that we can pin tasks to, separate, uh, to specific cores. And now with that little easy change, we're ready to write our demos. We're going to give two demo projects, the first being a simple Blinky program that will use two tasks, and the second demo will create four identical tasks that will hopefully demonstrate in a bit more detail how task scheduling and pinning works across two cores. As a reminder, all this source code will be linked down below in the description. Okay, let's get started with the Blinky program. This will be a good way to test to just check that you can compile a free RTOS SMP application. If we open the main.c file, we can see that we are including a few header files, including the standard uh, Pico libraries, Pico multicore, and some free RTOS headers like task and semaphores. Make sure that you have included in the CMakes list file the correct libraries that we need to use. Firstly, in the main.c file, we create two global variables, one being a task delay of 500, and this corresponds to milliseconds, so half a second, and then a task size of 128. Then we're going to create a semaphore. We must define a semaphore handle, which, have I, which I have called toggle sem, or toggle semaphore. We create two tasks, one I have called v task SMP demo delay, and the other v task SMP demo LED. In the delay task, we simply enter a loop, which gives the semaphore and then delays for half a second. The other task takes that semaphore and toggles the onboard LED. In this case, I'm using the Raspberry Pi Pico, and so the onboard LED is pin 25, but can you, you can theoretically use any GPIO pin that you fancy. In the main function, we simply configure the GPIO and then create the semaphore. Then we create the two tasks and start the scheduler. Make sure that you've remembered to set the correct number of cores in the free RTOS config.h file. Then you can compile and upload it to the board. And you should now see the LED blinking on and off. Now this isn't really an example that I hope you understand the scheduler and how it's using the two cores. So let's get onto that one. So I got the idea for this next demo from Daniel Gross's article on embeddedcomputing.com. I will leave a link to that article down below. I would highly recommend you giving it a read. Basically, we're going to spawn four identical tasks and then we're going to pin two of them to uh, each to a core and let the scheduler figure out which cores to run the other two tasks on. The tasks will report what cores they are running on over the serial console. We can use the same header files as our last demos, but we only need one task. However, I am going to create a function that will allow us to print the serial output. Why do we need this, you might ask? Why don't we just use printf? Well, there is a very real possibility that multiple tasks will be trying to print to the serial output at the same time. So we can use our binary semaphore to ensure that only the task calling the function will print at once. In our task function, we use the getName function, which takes a null argument, um, to give us the name of our calling task. And this is so we can print out what task is currently running. Then we create a variable to save the stuff we want printed. I've just called it out. And then in an infinite loop, we store the name of the task and the core that is running on using the get core num function. Then this is passed to our print function and we delay the, the, the task and allow another one to run. In the main function, we create a mutex instead of a binary semaphore. We create two tasks ha task handles, A and B, then create four of the same tasks with names of A to D. We give the tasks A and B the handles we previously created. Then we can use the task core affinity set function to pin task A to core zero and task B to core one. Then we can start the scheduler. If you build and upload your code and run it on the Pico, and then point a serial monitor to it, we can see that the four tasks are printed out with which core they're currently running on. You should be able to see that tasks A and B are running on cores zero and one respectively, and the other tasks will swap between cores zero and one. Sometimes it might take a few cycles for it to change around. 
Hopefully this shows you a bit about how you can pin tasks to cores and how the scheduler can also decide which cores to run tasks on. Now to recap what we have learned in this video, we have looked at what FreeRTOS SMP is, why you might want to use it, some of the major challenges about implementing SMP in your projects, and we have also provided a template project GitHub repository, linked down in the video description, alongside a written article of this video. We have worked through two demos to show you how tasks can be scheduled across both of the RP2040 cores. We are planning an upcoming video with more detailed information and examples on FreeRTOS SMP, so let us know what you want to see down in the comments below. We're also going to look at other FreeRTOS libraries, like the Core MQTT library. So thank you very much for watching. Let us know if you have any feedback in the comments below. If you have enjoyed the video and found it useful, then please make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out in the link down below.